A polyprotic process is one in which the pressure-volume relationship obeys the formula shown. Pressure times volume raised to a power eta is equal to a constant. Eta can take on any value between plus and minus infinity, but we will only look at values between zero and infinity. Polyprotic in this usage just means pertaining to changes in pressure and volume such that the product as shown remains constant. The expression guarantees that P1 times V1 to the power of eta is equal to P2 times V2 to the power of eta. And if we cross multiply, P2 over V1 is going to be equal to V1 over V2 together raised to the power of eta. Now I want to consider the polyprotic process in the context of the ideal gas law. Here I've written the gas law in its most common form, PV equals nRT. Next I've taken the polyprotic process equation and expanded the volume term on both sides so that we have V times V to the n minus 1. That allows me to plug in nRT in place of PV in the polyprotic equation. You can see right here where that PV is this PV in the gas law and then this nRT is that nRT in the gas law, and we've done that on both sides. Now canceling the nR and cross-dividing, we get T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2 to the power of eta minus 1. There is another way to introduce the gas law to the polyprotic equation. First, we solve the gas law for volume, and when it's plugged in, then we will eliminate volume. Here you see the expanded polyprotic process equation, followed by the gas law solved for volume. Then you see the volume term replaced by nRT over P on both sides, and the eta split between the numerator and denominator. Next, I cancel the nR, leaving P1 times T1 to the eta over P1 to the eta is equal to P2 times T2 to the eta over P2 to the eta. Then we cross multiply to get the ratio T2 over T1 to the power of eta. The next term shows P1 P2 to the power of eta over P2 P1 to the power of eta. Then I combine the P2 terms in the numerator and the P1 terms in the denominator and finally express them as a ratio to the power of eta minus 1. In this next step, we take the nth root of both sides, thereby isolating the ratio T2 over T1. We now include this result with the first result that we had for T2 over T1, and have the polyprotics process for an ideal gas expressed as a ratio of temperatures, a ratio of volumes, and a ratio of pressures. So far, all we've done is algebra, albeit some of it less than obvious. Only by defining a process, namely p v to the nth equals a constant, only by defining a process do we have something that can be integrated to find work. Remember that we have defined work as the negative integral from state 1 to state 2 of p dv where the negative sign is merely a convention and could just as well be positive. In order to carry out the integration, we need some relationship between pressure and volume. Previously, we've used the gas law, but now we will use the polyprotic process. Here I show it solved for pressure. If eta is equal to 1, we can write the integral as the negative integral from state 1 to state 2, of the constant over v to the power of 1, this is v to the power of 1 dv, and that then integrates to be negative of the constant times the log of v2 over v1. And since our constant is equal to p1 v1 to the power of 1, or for that matter p2 v2 to the power of 1, we have an expression for work that's going to be minus p1 times v1 times the log of v2 over v1. A slightly more interesting case is if eta is not equal to 1. Here we get the integral from state 1 to state 2 
as the constant over v to the power of a to dv. That integrates as minus the constant times v sub 2, 1 minus eta minus v sub 1 to the power of 1 minus eta over 1 minus eta. That's the inverse power rule. Again, the constant is defined by the polyprotic process. So we have a constant is p1 times v1 to the power of eta, which is also equal to p2 times v2 times the power of eta. Now when we integrate using the inverse power rule and plugging in the constant term as either p2 v2 or p1 v1, we get the expression shown where 1 over v to the power of eta integrates as v to the power of minus eta and becomes v to the power of minus eta plus 1, shown here as v to the power of 1 minus eta. Minus eta plus 1, 1 minus eta, what's the difference? In this last term, I've canceled the numerator terms v to the eta and v to the minus eta, leaving p2 v2 minus p1 v1 over 1 minus eta. In this last result, I've let the negative sign remain out front rather than incorporating it for those of you who might prefer the opposite definition of work. Let's look at the values that eta can assume. If eta is 1, then p times v to the power of 1 is a constant. That's our process. So pv equals nRT, if we use the ideal gas law, yields a constant because pv to the power of 1 yields a constant. Therefore, temperature must be constant. So eta equals 1 becomes an isothermal process. If we let eta equal 0, then pressure times v to the 0 is just equal to the pressure which is a constant, and that's the definition of an isobaric process. If we let eta equals infinity, then volume is essentially constant, and that's an isochoric process. But this is easier to see if we make a graph of pressure and volume. Here, looking at the purple line where eta goes to infinity, if the volume tries to drop below 1, then the pressure goes very high, very fast. Although it's impossible to compute with infinity, we can make some estimates to see what's going on. If we let the constant equal 180, and units don't really matter here, then when the volume is equal to 1, the pressure will be 180 over 1 to the power of infinity, which is just 180. And when we calculate pressure with the volume less than 1, say 0.99, I can no longer let eta equal infinity and use a calculator. So I will approximate infinity with the value 2500. Not so very close to infinity. And the pressure, 180 over 0.99 to the power of 2500, shoots up into the heavens at 1.47 times 10 to the 13th. As you can see in both the graph and this calculation, pressure goes straight up. Similarly, when volume tries to go above 1, the calculation of pressure goes nearly instantly to 0. However, for most real systems, all three variables, pressure, volume, and temperature, will be changing. There is a special situation which is also common, and that's the isentropic process. That word means that the process is both adiabatic, Q equals zero, no heat goes in or out, and that the work, whether in or out, is frictionless. Also, matter doesn't transfer, and the process is reversible. Okay, so maybe it's not common, but we do approximate systems that way. For example, this piston cylinder that's shown in the upper corner of the diagram. As an example of an isentropic process, we have the piston cylinder where the piston compresses a gas so rapidly that there's essentially not time for heat transfer and, that the, and therefore the process is considered nearly adiabatic and also due to oil we choose to neglect friction. I have another video for the isentropic process and I've put a link in the description below. In that process, eta is equal to gamma, the ratio of heat capacities, 
That video shows a really short derivation of PV to the gamma equals to a constant. That's it. Thank you. Keep coming back.